So the goal of the project, firstly, was to understand consumer behaviour in China for illegal rhino horn, to get a Chinese perspective on the matter. We want to connect people in China emotionally with the rhino in this kind of situation now. And we noticed that design can help a lot in this kind of social method. These are just six of the students of a total group of 40 students who participated in this initiative with us, present their work and go back home as ambassadors to convey a message in terms of what is their experience here in South Africa, what have they learned from people like yourselves that's going to help them enhance their work. We as the students, also as a future designers, we can cut in, we want to rebuild the connections, we want to rebuild the emotional connections. As soon as we started unpacking and they were explaining what effort they'd been to in essentially 90 days and they had these 3D printed, they linked uh, giving back the horn and their slogan, it was just brilliant, it was absolutely brilliant and it's actually something that is visceral, can actually go home, remind you of your feelings or however you view the rhino question. We are the winning team, NOLA, from Tongji University. Rhinos are facing a danger mainly by those poachers, and we are facing the danger because of the haze in the air, and we are both life-threatened. So, in somehow we are connected because of those dangers, we can know that it is uncool to buy those rhino horns and those products. Yes. Their presentation on Save the Rhino, it was very brilliant. And I like the way they are trying to be innovative towards the conservation of the rhino. We are really kind of naive, just trying to come here and see this beautiful creature. But the first thing we see is a skullet. It is, uh, yeah, I feel very awkward because I know the biggest rhino hole consumer country is in China. And we're expecting they treat rhino as a life, not as a product. Okay, so those rhinos on the right there are all orphans. Their mothers are all shot by patches. We've seen the value of having youth groups coming through. It's quite incredible to see the reaction of a, a young child if they can physically touch a rhino that's awake, you know, see its size and that. And I think that leaves a lasting impression that they can take with them. And you know, if you can change one out of a hundred people's attitude, you know, particularly people that don't have any connotation to these things, then already you're making a difference. If we want to secure our future, if we want to secure the future of our world heritage, we've got to invest in the youth. And I am appreciative of that because whilst it's also our goal to educate them, they bring so much value and so much insight and so much enthusiasm that it actually becomes a learning process for us. So we both benefit. It happened till today, I've viewed the Chinese as the enemy. Very pleased that my initial suspicions have been thoroughly squashed. I was impressed how enthusiastic they were and how they embraced the problems that we're having, which was a breath of fresh air. It's, it's really exciting to see the animals in, in real life, not in the zoo. My favorite thing is the time when I look into the rhino size. There's still lots of to be done and it has to be us who is doing this. No one else can do this for us. My highlights is when I see the rhino itself. This is my first time to see it in real life and it's some kind of experience that I will never forget. When they go back, this will be a very strong uh, influence, a uh, memory for them. It's just amazing. 